Nice to see you again. This is Andrea. Uh, now, did I get to meet you the last time I was here in March? Different. Different person. Different. <laughs> okay, that I I was. Thank you for being a different person because that's what my brain was telling me. <laughs> I know what you do, I know what your company is. Let everybody else know. Uh, we're Las Vegas Valley Community Management, so HOAs, Homeowners Associations, right. are essentially corporations, which are set up so that their officers and members are volunteer homeowners who get elected by other homeowners, and they don't necessarily understand the, the very regulated uh, requirements of running what's essentially a corporation. Yes. And tell everyone what your name is. Uh, I'm Michael Graves. And how long have you owned your company? Two years. Just quickly, this isn't your first rodeo. This business, you weren't born into this business, it's not a family business. You chose to be in this business, but you had two other careers first? I was a Marine Corps pilot. Right. For, I did that for, for about, 20 years? Well, about eight years. Eight years, okay. And then I uh, went into essentially financial industries such as financial planning, mortgage loans. I did that shortly. And then okay. I went to law school. Right. And then I ended up practicing in litigation for about eight years. I think it's important to balance uh, work and family life. So half the staff works from home any given day. Fabulous. So, now, so this is so great because there's so much controversy about that work balance and whether or not it costs companies money and it's just, you know, bad thing to do and all this other stuff. You really are a detail-oriented person and you make de decisions when the numbers make sense. Mm -hmm. It appears it must make sense to you to have your people have a better balance and to have flexibility. I, I try and focus more on happy staff more than happy customers because if you do it the other way around, right. you don't end up with either. There you go. <laughs> People need to hear that. It is possible to have it many ways. Maybe it's not that way every single day, but you thoughtfully craft out your business's success, not only taking that into account for your employees, but taking it into account for yourself too. It does flow down from the top. <laughs> yeah, it, it, one of the things that the Marine Corps teaches yeah. its officers is don't require your Marines to do anything you're not willing to do yourself. And so if I wanted to work from home two days a week, I wanted to make sure my staff that can do so has the opportunity. You know, it's not necessarily, I don't keep looking until I find the perfect solution. I there look you at go. Some and this will work better than what I have. And that's so critical. The ability to take action when you aren't 100% comfortable yet you have enough information to be confident about your decision. I, something may be important, but it may not be urgent. Correct. Something may be urgent, but not important. And as soon as you can break that down, if something's important, not urgent, I can wait till I make the decision. But if it's yep. urgent, I have to, it's like chess. You have, yep. you have to make your moves in a certain period of time. You may not be able to yeah. determine what the absolute best move is, but you know which ones aren't horrible. And so you, if you're pressed for time, you make that move. Okay, so this is one of the things I want us to pay attention to. You know I've been doing a lot of hiking and trying to show you how hiking and being in nature has so much to do with your personal development. Notice how Michael told us that his hobby of chest gave him skills that he then brings back into his business. That's what we're all charged with doing living our lives and finding those things that give us joy and that we find real pleasure in and then taking from it the skills that allow us to also create the businesses and the livelihoods that we're interested in. The offices are just always so attractive to me Everybody's doing their work. I see people floating around. You know, there's activity, but you know that they're here to get a job done. Sorry about the phone. No, that's great. Oh, Super that's busy. okay. You're in business. <laughs> Your trunk. Oh, my car trunk, yeah. <laughs>
was the time, the moment that you became my favorite because we had already talked about your values. You had taken the values in action, you had gotten your values, and the top one was love of learning, one of my top also. And my trunk may not look this way, but my office sure does. Okay. You know to call in some stimulation, some business stimulation, like buying me through an NPR auction. Take the information and you immediately apply it. That's the second time I've heard that where we had, uh, I had a, uh, when I first started, I didn't know what the HOA industry was, so I hired a consultant that's a specialist yep. in making HOA companies as profitable as they can be. And he often said, it's so nice to work with someone who actually does the things I tell him to do. <laughs> so, a question that I ask frequently. When we meet again a year from now, what will you be telling me about your business? Um, well, it, there's a lot of consolidation in the industry. I, I've had offers on the company I don't want to sell. But if there's an opportunity for acquiring another company right. or some type of merger, uh, I think that's where we'll be in a, in a year, either a merger or having acquired another company. Oh, I'll take you to lunch on that one. <laughs> for sure. Thank you so Thanks, much. Andrew. You have been as wonderful today as I remembered when we got to work together Great. for that mm -hmm. short period of time. And it really... It, it just shows me what is possible when someone does the work. Yeah, and I want to thank you for uh, giving me the guidance that you gave me, just uh, not only for how to run a business, but how to make it integrate into what I like to do and how to use those skills to make the business work better and make my life work. Leaving Michael, I just love to think back on what it is he was saying and why what he's doing is so important. Here's a person who takes a very mundane business. He doesn't have to have apps. He doesn't have to have the newest and greatest technology, but he functionally thinks of a business, picks and chooses the best technologies, and then makes the business grow. That's the thing that I think younger people coming into an entrepreneurial way of life have got to pay attention to. Don't go after the newest, shiny object. Look at those objects that everyone needs to do from what they eat to where they like to buy something and see if there's a way that you could actually make it a more profitable business using the technologies you love so much.